Well, we tried it once before and now we have to try it again to extract Trump from the White House. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Yesterday, Donald Trump violated the First Amendment. The First Amendment literally says, and I quote, the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances shall not, essentially shall not be violated. That's a, a quote from the First Amendment for a blasphemous photo op holding a Bible in front of the church, the, the St. John's church. This and, and, and is mind boggling. It was a peaceful demonstration re reported by every news agency, including an Australian one. This is huge news in Australia. An Australian reporter got tear gassed and beat up. And today he's going to the shrine to St. John Paul II, a guy that Louise and I actually met and had a private audience with, who repeatedly and explicitly condemned racism. He's going to John Paul II's shrine for another photo op. What's going on here? And I think it's really important to understand exactly what's going on here and how this might play out. What's going on here is that Donald Trump learned at the knee, essentially, of Roy Cohn and Roger Stone, who were big you know, advocates of, and Roger Stone was a counselor to Richard Nixon. He is playing out Richard Nixon's law and order and the subset of that Southern strategy um, uh, play. It's, it's, uh, it's very straightforward. This is what Nixon did in 1968, particularly after the Democratic National Convention when the Chicago police rioted. And we're seeing now police riots across the United States. The vast majority of the violence against property is being done by protesters. Or, or, or actually, let me amend that, is being done by people who are among the protesters. The protesters are protesting. They're not, they're not destroying property. The people who are destroying property, whether it's people on the left or people on the right, they're destroying property. But the people who are harming people, the ones who are damaging people, the ones who took out an eye of a reporter, the ones who are beating people, the ones who are gassing people, the ones who are shooting rubber-coated metal bullets. And let's start calling them that, by the way. At, at these peaceful protesters, those are the police. We have police riots across the United States. And that's what happened in 1968. And it was very straightforward. And here's, you know, I mean, law and order were Nixon's code words for white supremacy. But back in 1968, I remember it very well. Back in 1968, the media, the mainstream media, nobody called out, nobody called out Nixon's racism. Nobody said law and order is a catchphrase for keep black people down. Nobody said that. That commentary was, was happening in America, but it was happening in the black press. America today is a very different place. In 1968, you did not see black faces on television unless they were villains in cop shows or unless they were buffoons in comedies. That was it. They certainly weren't news reporters by and large. There was the occasional exception, of course, but they were the exceptions that proved the rule. In 1968, we were a segregated society. We had been legally a segregated society up until just three years before that. So this worked for Nixon in 68 because the press went along with it and amplified it. And nobody called out what the dog whistle was and, and, and frankly, you know, white people in 1968, by and large, were blissfully ignorant of the consequences of their own white privilege. But white people today understand what white privilege is. And I'm going to get to that in more detail in just a minute. And that's why I, I believe that Donald Trump's try, attempt to reinvent Richard Nixon's racist law and order strategy is going to fail. And the question is, what happens when it fails? What happens when, when black and brown people say, no, you know, <laughs> we're not going to be quiet. 
We're not gonna, we're not gonna just, you know, go back home and, and shut up. We're not gonna stop electing black and brown officials and Native American officials. We're gonna keep moving forward. So when Trump's strategy fails, there's basically two directions this country will go. Either he will crack down and create a fully fascistic government led out of the White House by Trump and Pence and Bill Barr, who was talking to the, to the park police in a tank just before they, they cleared the peaceful protesters in front of St. John's Church. By the way, cleared is a euphemism. Fired um, rubber-coated metal bullets at them, fired tear gas at them, beat them. Peaceful protesters. Peaceful protest is in the First Amendment. It is protected. The government may not do that. They did this so that Trump could stand in front of a church holding a Bible for a photo op because he's afraid that his support is slipping among white evangelicals. That's what the polls, uh, three days ago, a poll came out showing Trump is slipping among white evangelicals. So ta-da! Trump's in front of a church. That was yesterday. Today, it's going to be John, the St. Paul, John Paul II. So number one, this could lead to, to essentially fascism in the United States. Or number two, the uprisings continue. Things eventually, you know, slow down a little bit. America doesn't erupt in flames, which I think, frankly, is what Trump wants. We end up with a new president, and that new president says, I'm going to heal the nation, we're going to bring people together, we're going to reform the police, as Joe Biden said this morning in that br absolutely brilliant speech he gave. In either case, no matter which way this plays out, right now is the time for the House of Representatives, and I'm calling on Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and and, and frankly, all the committees that were involved, Jerry Nadler and the Judiciary Committee and whatnot, I'm calling on them to reintroduce uh, or to introduce a second set of articles of impeachment, this time specifically for Trump's violation of the First Amendment for his photo op. And toss that to the Senate and give these Republicans in the Senate a second chance to make good this massive screw up that they did just a little while ago. In, in letting this man continue. I mean, so much for Susan Collins' uh, argument that, oh, don't worry, he's been chastised by being impeached by the House. We don't need to throw him out of office here in the Senate. He's learned his lesson. Yes, Susan, so nice. And then, of course, you know, you've got guys like Tom Cotton and Lindsey Graham who were like, how dare you even think of kicking Trump out of office? Right. But uh, frankly, I think that this is the time for uh, second articles of impeachment. By the way, when Trump had the uh, park police tear gas and shoot metal, you know, rubber coated metal bullets at peaceful protesters in front of St. John's Church, the church looked abandoned. Well, in fact, it was not abandoned by choice. Um, uh, it, it was it was abandoned. The priest was was kicked out, Reverend Reverend Jeannie Garbasi. He was expelled from the church along with a few other people. He says they turned holy ground into a battleground. The Reverend Right Reverend Marianne Budd, who is the uh, the Bishop of Washington, said Trump's arrival at St. John's happened without warning and left her outraged. She said the symbol of him holding a Bible as a prop, I was horrified. 